how are we doing people right jimbo slightly hung over but ready for el clasico i've had my like pre-match walk and i'm thinking like okay what do you how do you make this video decent what's the angle here what are we talking about massive thank you to spotify who've sent us there obviously we've got a podcast with them and um but it's already been an amazing trip i was able to have about a half an hour chat with marquez uh rafa marquez rafael marquez the like and he's so good looking even now guys and uh just he's boss be manager now we're able to have a good chat and i was sort of thinking about a lot of stuff and one thing just won't leave my mind and it's when i was on the plane and i started watching i started watching last dance for like the fifth time sixth time maybe i've watched it and i thought that's what el clasico is about not the end game but to get to the end game of having six championships and being Michael Jordan being the iconic you have to do it from a young age you have to do it from day one and that is what this Barcelona and Real Madrid sides are about right now it is Jude Bellingham's first El Clasico now I'm not calling him Michael Jordan I'm not saying that what I am saying and I'm not saying he's going to have that kind of career but what I am saying is the attitude of being in a rush to win that is something that he has but maybe that's an English thing. Maybe it's not about Bellingham today. What I'm intrigued to see is, is it about Fermin Lopez? Is it about Pedri coming back into the side? There's so much chat about who's going to be fit, who's not going to be fit. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. But someone will arrive. That's the thing. Someone will arrive today. So who is it going to be? I'm going to bring you along for it. I'll show you bits and pieces. I'm also going to enjoy the game for sure, but I'll try and bring in as much as I can. It's already been a cool trip, but something's going to happen today. It's an El Clasico. It's Jude Bellingham's first El Clasico, and it's the first for a lot of players here. So who will make their name today? Let's find out. Martin with an absolute killer spot here, right? Look, see if you can find the Real Madrid fans. <laughs> None of, there they are. Everything's sold out. Everything's sold out. Yeah! 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 The whole place has just gone silent. There it is, Olympic Stadium. 2-1-2. Two, two. Real Madrid from nowhere. Wow. I mean, we wondered. It was a great game. Great atmosphere. I did find it amazing that there's no Real Madrid fans, like a tiny amount. Obviously in England, you'll be given a certain amount of fans. Maybe, you know, we're talking about the old firm and how they don't get many away fans now. And they've done that here and it, God, when Jude Bellingham scored both of those goals, I've never heard silence like that, if that makes sense. He, we wondered, didn't we? I wondered about that sort of Michael Jordan mentality. Now, I, again, I repeat, it's early days. But he was, so there's two ways to spin this, because he was poor. He was really poor in that game. Really, really poor. But he made a choice twice to, first of all, he got the ball and you knew. You knew he was going to get out of his feet. You knew he was going to take a shot. And you probably knew it was going to be on target. But that was outrageous, that first goal. To see it live, guys. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I don't get to do this stuff without you guys supporting, watching, being a part of it. So you guys are unbelievable and I'm so grateful. So, so grateful. Wow. But that goal, I can't, it went so quiet. So, so quiet. But I think if you just go, well, Jude Bellingham's the truth, that's it. You know, he does what he wants when he wants. I don't think it's as simple as that. Barcelona were the better team for about 60 minutes. They were comfortable. They frustrated Real Madrid, Araujo, 
on Vinicius Jr. was absolutely brilliant. He was able to frustrate him massively. He had a very frustrating game overall. But Real Madrid started to kind of find their feet. And I thought, I looked at both teams, question for the comments. How do you feel about this one? Who's the better team and who's got the better players? Because I was sort of watching it for a while and I was thinking, you know, Real Madrid have got some superstars here. And Barcelona got a lot of players who, you know, have been unwanted elsewhere. But Barcelona were playing better as a team, for sure. I thought Gundogan was fantastic in the game. Um, I thought, as I say, Araujo was, was superb. And it was interesting, they played Cancelo and Balde almost as wingers. When you think of that five that you'll always have with a Barcelona team, that's what you got from, from both fullbacks being higher up for them. So it was one where they had a bit more defensive stability but you still were able to get some, some quality. And the goal comes from a mistake. Gundogan does what Gundogan does. And that's what I want to talk about with Bellingham is that it's incredible what he's done in terms of the, the knack and the quality in those two instances to get Real Madrid over the line. And that's why I say he has that Michael Jordan mentality. But what I would also say is there is a lot of room for growth in terms of him as a player and his role in football in terms of running a game can he run a game or is he just going to be that impact player at times? And if that is the case, you would imagine at times he wouldn't be able to make that choice and it'd be all about him. But on this occasion, it certainly was. He, he was poor otherwise. And in terms of, again, the growth, when you look at Gundogan and the comfort and clarity and quality that he brings, but in particular, Luka Modric changed this game of football. Luka Modric was outstanding. He was all over the pitch. He took hold of the game when they were on the ball. He still has that ability to scurry away from players. I thought Kamavinga, when he came on, was absolutely essential for them as well. Made them tick a lot better. And in that last sort of 20, 30 minutes, it's kind of went back and forth. It felt like there was a bit of a lack of quality at times, but just those few players to get you over the line, the likes of Modric and Bellingham in particular. I think you saw the gaps, you know, Jocelyn was poor. I thought Rodrigo was poor. Um, Cruz, I thought, was poor, and you saw a different player in the fact that the difference between Modric and Cruz is that Modric just can get all over the pitch, see the space, enjoy the space, enjoy the ball, and, and create things from nothing. He was absolutely fantastic. So, again, Bellingham has time and space to grow, but he is still a difference maker, even in games where he's poor. So you can spin it both ways. I think Barcelona fans will be very disappointed, understandably so. But that was my first El Clasico, and to see those goals was outrageous and it was utterly, as, as I say, the silence was deafening. And Bellingham is the main character. Let me know how you feel about that comparison with, the, with Michael Jordan. Um, it feels like a jump, I get that. But at the same time, you know, he made a choice today. Real Madrid win that one. I think both teams aren't where they want to be yet. An overall team level, I don't think Real Madrid are there and they miss Benzema massively. And Barcelona, I think there's a lack of quality to a point there. But great game to see, great game to be a part of, and massive thank you to Spotify. Um, let me know how you feel in the comments down below, Madrid fans, Barcelona fans. Again, thank you guys, this is so cool, man, and I'm so grateful.